Welcome, in front of me is a TCL60 SE Next paper and today I will be showing you how you can go through the setup process of this device. So, when you boot it up for the first time you should be presented with the same screen that you can see on my end and you get to select your desired language from right over here, I'm going to be sticking with the English. And then you can click on start which presents you with the terms and the privacy which you can type right here to read exactly what you're agreeing to but at the end of the day if you're like everyone else you'll probably never read this a single word of it and you're just going to select i agree to have joined uh, the user experience improvement programs now this just to me sounds always like data gathering crap so i like my privacy so i'm going to be skipping it even though it probably has no effect to be honest next we have some parental controls you can set them up if you want to, um, though right here we only have the got it option. I guess I, I got it. Next we have the option to connect to Wi-Fi network. Now for some reason I cannot skip this. I'm not sure why, I should be able to. Uh, so I'll need to be signing into some kind of network because I can't skip it. Once you connect to your network, we should be taken further. Now, we either will have the Google sign-in page visible, or I will need to be ver I will need to verify the uh, credentials from well, before the reset. But I don't see a lock, so I don't think that might be the case. But we'll see in a second. Now you can insert your SIM card if you want to, uh, or download eSIM if you have one, or you can just skip this. Next we have copy apps and the data. Uh, this step is again optional. This is using Google account, so it's not really copying it, it's just getting the data of what you had on your previous account and what's on Google Cloud and then just resyncing it with this device. Next, we should have the Google login page, assuming it's going to show up. And it is. Again, this is optional. It, it is an Android, so you probably want to log in for the simplicity and speed. I will be skipping this. Next, we have date and time, which uh, not sure why this page is even showing up. Typically, when you connect to network, you don't have the date and time page to show up at all. Uh, but TCL is, I guess, a little bit different here. You can change some of the settings actually, like for instance the 24 hour clock or just a 12 hour one depending on which one you prefer and so on. I'm just going to ignore this and move on to the next page. Which allows me to set, up, set a fingerprint for unlocking. Now if I select next I will also be forced to select pin, pattern or password as you are unable to have just a biometric uh, lock on your device like fingerprint as those aren't 100% reliable and assuming for instance your finger gets dirty You're not able to unlock your phone and obviously th that's why you're forced to having a pin pattern password because in those times When you fail to unlock your device several times with the fingerprint you can just draw a, for instance pattern and it will unlock it no problem or you just don't need to protect your device at all. Now we also have the face unlock as well. I can use that as well, but again, it's another biometric and same thing goes with the pin pattern password requirement. And here we have the pen pattern password. Could have just give you all three options at the same time, but instead it just splits it up into three pages to be you know, time wasting. Next, we have some uh, next paper kind of thing. So we have uh, Max Ink Mode, we have Ink Paper Mode, and we have uh, Color Paper Mode. So what these are is basically different ways to make the phone look like it's using a paper ink display. Well, it's obviously not. And it's kind of a mixture of, you know, what the, the display here is for with the matte glass, uh, trying to give you the same kind of look. You can choose whichever one you think looks best for you. Uh, for just a guess, kind of. 
yeah, I'll stick with this one, assuming it's going to apply it. Uh, moving on, we have the Google services like location scanning and sending user and diagnostic data. And I can see you can turn all of those off, but it's from Google. If these actually mattered, uh, Google wouldn't be in uh, antitrust lawsuits. So I always look at these as more of a general, uh, general guidelines for Google to maybe consider when you when you ask them to not gather your data. They're like, yeah, we'll take it, take it in consideration, uh, and uh, oh, we're done. Go f yourself, and we're still gonna gather data. That's kind of how I look at this. Uh, so I. I wouldn't feel, you know, uh, I wouldn't consider this to be, you know, don't gather data to them not gather data. So if you want to be completely, you know, uh, private and stuff like that, I don't think you want to use Android. Next, we have a choose your browser and search engine. So we're just going to select next. And here are your browsers that you can choose from. Now these, there is actually a pretty decent uh, list of browsers to choose from here. Choose whichever one you want. Just going to select whatever. And then we have search engines. Now, search engines, for some reason, is much smaller list. There is more search engines. There is like decently more search engines, but they're just not present here for some reason. So I'm going to choose uh, you know what, anything that is not Google. Probably chose a completely garbage one, but it's not like I'm going to be using this device. Next, we have a review additional apps. Let's just click on OK. Uh, here we have some uh, next vision. So it's basically enhanced uh, or image enhancement and video enhancements or otherwise fake HDR and upscaling. And that's basically what these are. Um, they're both enabled and they will both consume more of your phone's battery when using them. For image, it will be obviously impa impacted in applications that can use this, for instance, like Google Photos or Gallery. Uh, while video enhancement, the fake HDR, will be used in applications that can support it, like YouTube or some video player that comes with the device. Other than that, when you're not using these specific applications, uh, then you don't need to worry about uh, higher power consumption. Next, we have TCL AI. Of course, they had to have their own. God damn it. Uh, so we have text assistant and a gesture wake up. Now, this just sounds like a a lot of nothing to be honest but there is already plenty enough AI here I don't need another one uh, next we have home screen style uh, so we have the uh, home screen and draw, uh, drawer and then a home screen only with all applications on home screen kind of like an iPhone I'm gonna stick with the first one that's just what I prefer next we have navigation method we have button navigation gesture and uh, that's about it so I'm gonna stick with gestures Setup complete, finish. And there we go, there is our setup and for some reason the phone needs to restart. So yeah, anyway, if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.